Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Hart and today I'll be doing a breakdown of my final look for plays for NFL Week 5 here on DraftKings. For this Sunday main slate, we have 10 games, so I'll be doing uh, my final look build as well as going over my final look core plays for you guys. So make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Check out my price fix video, which will be out after this as well. I will have my Sunday night football slate breakdown coming out uh, tomorrow morning. So stay tuned for that. Do really appreciate all the support. If you guys could hit the like button, really, really do appreciate it. So before I get into the final look here, just want to do a quick look at the game totals for every game. Obviously, the Jaguars and Bills, that's the early morning game for the Sunday slate there. I might put a video out for that. Just, you know, keep an eye out, keep an eye out for that if I do. But we have the Texans Falcons 41 and a half. More of a, a sleeper in terms of pieces from that game besides Bijan Robinson, who everyone, you know, really likes in that game. Ravens Steelers, a 38, you know, very disgusting game here. Saints Patriots, kind of the same thing, 39 game total. Panthers Detroit, uh, there's some options here. 44, we'll talk about them. Giants Dolphins, we'll talk about the headache here in the running back situation for the Dolphins side. 47 and a half game total, though. Um, you know, we really want to target the Giants. They've been letting up so many points. So that'll be a uh, you know, pretty popular one to get pieces from. Titans Colts, it'll be an interesting one, you know, to see kind of what happens with the uh, JT ownership, Jonathan Taylor, as well as, you know, what happens with the DeAndre Hopkins ownership in um, King Henry. So that's the interest there is those three players uh, in Pittman, I will say. Bengals Cardinals, 44 and a half. This is a very intriguing game here. Uh, I, I think it would be an absolute shootout. Eagles Rams, 15 and a half. Uh, a nice solid, you know, game total there. And then Chiefs Vikings going to be the the top dog in terms of, you know, chalky players across the board for DFS. The game that we do want to get some pieces from. And then Jets Broncos, 43 and a half. So getting into this first look here, I do have, you know, if you guys want like a, a position by position, especially, you know, you know, I'll break down of pretty much every player. Go check out my early look breakdown from a few days ago. I go through every single player, um, all the different options in that video. This is going to be more so just quickly touching on, you know, kind of some final thoughts on each position in each player, kind of like four to five uh, people in each group that I do like, uh, and I'm going to be targeting for tomorrow. So starting off here with the quarterback side, um, top five-ish plays for me from quarterbacks is going to be Patrick Mahomes, 8,200, Tua, 7,100, Kirk Cousins, 6,900. Moving on down here, Matt Stafford, 5,600. Love that price tag. He's throwing it the most in the league, pass attempts-wise. And then Josh Dobbs, 5,200 if you want some cheap value. Uh, so starting off with Patrick Mahomes, obviously the game of the week in terms of game total. Um, it's Patrick Mahomes, you know, coming off a very, very poor game there against the Jets. Now he gets the matchup versus the Vikings. Absolutely want to target that. So really, really like him. Going to be super popular, but for good reason. Moving on down to Tua, 7,100. Um, you know, he's just been super efficient. Uh, you know, has a massive upside because he has Waddle. He has the running backs. He has Tyree Kill. Uh, so absolutely love, you know, Tua in this spot here against the Giants, who've been lining up just massive, massive amounts of points in their game. So he obviously looks like a fantastic option there. Has a lot to, you know, pair him with. I don't mind Richardson either. I know he'll be a popular option. He's been very, very good in terms of upside with that rushing. It's just one of the things that, you know, Mike Vabrell, Vrabel is very good and, you know, kind of have running a game plan against, you know, rookie quarterbacks, especially when that team is, you know, geared towards stopping the run. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there with uh, Anthony Richardson. I, I do think he'll be pretty popular. Wouldn't be surprised if it's a big letdown spot. Kirk Cousins, um, it's just one of those things, you know, he's throwing the ball a ton, 44, 44, 50, and he has massive upside. Obviously, he has Justin Jefferson, he has Addison, he has uh, TJ Hawkinson, so a lot to pair him with there. And, you know, obviously we're going to expect that game, high game total to score a lot of points. So should be a lot of passing attempts for Kirk Cousins. Their running game is not the best right now, so they do like to pass it more. I will mention Joe Burrow. It's just one of those things if you think he's healthy enough. I mean, he's throwing the ball, it's fine. It just, he can't really move. They haven't looked efficient, but would not be surprised if he actually finally has a good bounce back game there. So I will play him probably in the lineup or two, uh, but nothing crazy. Moving down to Matt Stafford, 5,600. As I mentioned, I, I He's up there in terms of, you know, passing attempts per game in the league, uh, kind of alongside Kirk Cousins. Him and those two are, I think, kind of at the top. As you can see, 38, 55, 33, 40. Um, it's just one of those things, you know, he's really kind of just gotten screwed on terms of, in terms of just passing touchdowns. Only won the past three games. Uh, but with Cooper Cup back, really, really like him. I'm sure he'll get, you know, steamed up in terms of ownership. But it's a great spot here. Philadelphia is a pass funnel defense. So we really want to target them. 
uh, through the air. We got Puka, we got Cup, two great options. A uh, nice pivot option to the tight end, uh, Tyler Higby. So I do like Stafford, a really, really good amount. And as I mentioned, Joshua Dobbs, just been super, super under the radar for most people. Super efficient, as you can see. Um, going against you know two really tough defenses, probably two of the best defenses and teams in the league the past two weeks. That Dallas game was actually pretty close. I know it doesn't look like that, uh, but he still managed to put up 17 fancy points. Uh, it's just one of those things where he has the rushing upside. As you can see, three for 41 in a touchdown in week two, six for 55 in week three, 12 for 48 uh, in week four. And against San Fran, that game was a lot closer than it looks until about, you know, kind of close towards the end of the third quarter is when the Cardinals finally ran out of steam there. Uh, you know, a little bit into the fourth, they had some life. But as you can see, 265, two touchdowns, uh, and 12 for 48. It's just he's been super efficient against two of the best defenses in the league. And now he gets a matchup against the Cardinals, or excuse me, the uh, Bengals. Sorry, losing my train of thought. Against the Bengals there, he's 5,200. He's been super efficient. I think he's a great, great value play. But for the quarterback to lock into the lineup, I'm still deciding between Matt Stafford and Patrick Mahomes. I, I think right now, I'm going to lean towards I'll lean towards Stafford. Running back situation, obviously the big news here is Saquon Barkley, questionable. Um, if he's out, obviously I do like Breida a good amount. We saw him last week be heavily involved in terms of rushing attempts as well as you know catching passes out of the backfield. So Breida would be a great option. Um, but if you know Barkley is back, I do really like him as a top spin-up option. He should be heavily involved. Um, he was limited in practice. Haven't got any news yet about tomorrow, but keep an eye on that. John Robinson is going to be super, super popular here. It's a fantastic matchup. The only downside is, is that, um, the only downside is, is that he still shares the backfield with Algier. Does you know Algier does eat up some red zone opportunities, but it's just one of those things. He's been heavily involved in the passing game. Gets the rushing attempts. He's been very efficient as well. So it's hard not to love him in that smash spot. Jack Henry, more of. Uh, just an ownership play once again. You know, we smashed on him last week. Wouldn't be surprised if he goes for it again there against the Indiana team. Jonathan Taylor is back, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with him. 6,800. They said he's going to be on a snap count, but it could be one of those things where he smashes in a snap count. I'm not going to go there yet, but uh, he, he's finally back, which is great to see, especially for my fancy teams. I was one of those people that did uh, st- uh, stash him away in hopes that he'd be back or traded, and it looks like it should work out. Kyron Williams uh, against, you know, Arizona, or not against the Eagles. It's more of a stay away for me this week. He's still the main running back. He's still seen a, a ton of time of attempts in terms of, you know, catching the ball as well as rushing the ball. It's just, I don't love this matchup. I do think with Cooper Cup back, they're going to stick to more just passing it to him and Puka. Uh, I do think Kyron Williams will lose a little bit. Philly's also decent against the run. So as of right now, Kyron Williams, he's still seen a ton of opportunities. So I'm not saying he's not a, not a play at all. It's just not for me. Now we get to the super chalky range that I, want, I quickly want to touch on real fast. Montgomery, there's no Gibbs, uh, so he just makes him even more viable there against Carolina, one of the best opportunities to target. Uh, we could look to Craig Reynolds, would be running back two if there's no Gibbs. I actually don't mind taking a shot on Gibbs too if, uh, if he's good to go as a pivot off of Montgomery. Mixon, I do think will fall under the radar a little bit here in this range, but he comes in at a great price tag. We know he's rushing upside, passing upside. Kamara, same thing, 6,300 rushing and passing upside. Now we get to Mostert and Achan. I just don't know what to do with this team. Obviously, it's one of the best best opportunities against the Giants. It's just one of those things that Mostert is still running back one. I know Achan did start the second half, but still, Mostert, we saw what happened. You know, he did fumble twice, so obviously he lost uh, you know, some trust there for the rest of the game. But still, before that, week one, two, and three, fantastic. He's running back one. Achan, running back two. He was running back three, like the first, you know, week two. And then, obviously, Ahmed got hurt. He became running back uh, two, and he went off the past two weeks. But, you know, week one or week four, only eight touches, uh, you know, five targets. It's just one of those things. It's just so hard to trust. They come in at great price tags. They're in one of the best offenses, one of the best spots. But HN coming in at, like, 30% ownership right now is just absolutely egregious. It's more of so of a stay away. I'd rather get to Tyree Kill. I'd rather get to Jalen Waddle than the two running backs right now. I think there's better options. Um just in terms of lower ownership and similar upside. Moving on down here, I really like James Conner here against uh, Cincinnati. Looks like a great, great play. Uh, Stevenson and uh, Javante are questionable. If both are in, I'm assuming both are going to be in. Um, 
they're both fine plays, uh, nothing standing out. But they're out. Obviously, we can look to the backups. Don't know if I'd want to get to uh, Ezekiel Elliott there for the Patriots. Uh, but for, you know, Javante Williams here, obviously, Julio McLaughlin would be the backup down here. Uh, he'd look a solid play there at 5,000. But the one I'm looking to is, you know, Brees Hall. I've already talked about him. Uh, don't have to touch on him much besides the fact that he is no more snap count. Uh, he gets a fantastic matchup here against Denver. Denver's let up 100, I think it's 147 fantasy points to running backs the past three weeks in a row. Uh, 176 rushing yards per game to opposing teams. Absolute smash spot here for Brees Hall. He's going to be super popular, but that price tag is really, really hard to not, to, uh, not get away or not get to. I will mention uh, a guy who's flying under the ra- radar. Damian Pierce has seen a, a massive increase. I think it's like 10% in the past three weeks in terms of his usage uh, in snap count. But so 15 attempts, 14 and 24. I know they haven't been efficient at all. They've been a you know, heavy, heavy pass defense, or excuse me, heavy, heavy pass team. But this could be more of a, a ground and pound gross game here, very slow pace. So I will mention, I will mention him. He's seen a ton of, ton of uh, opportunity and a ton of, ton of snap share count right now. So he's fully healthy. Uh, you know, that's kind of why they kind of limited him the first few weeks in terms of just like snap count percentage. But now he's getting, I think it's close to 60 or 70% of snap count. So I will mention him. I will mention Miles Sanders. Um, you know, his price really dropped down uh, to 5,200, but still he's going to see the opportunities. It was just more so of a letdown week in terms of him being injured. So I will mention him. He could be a solid play there. Moving on down here, uh, in terms of value, nothing too, too crazy in terms of value for me. So moving on to the running back two for me, I think right now it's going to be uh, James Conner. Just love that matchup there for him. He's seen a ton. That offense has been super, super efficient. Maybe it's finally a letdown week for them, but still, I really like him there. Now getting to the wide receiver situation, you can't go wrong with any of the top guys. I do like Jalen Waddle as a pivot off of Tyreek, even though Waddle hasn't seen this just hasn't seen the amount of targets he should be seeing every game. I'm going to just say that every single week until he finally sees 10 targets a game. But with Cooper Cup back, I think he averages, I think it's close to 25 fantasy points per game when Stafford throws to him. So uh, he should be full go, 100%. So really, really like Cup here against uh, the Eagles. 8,600, you know, Cup looks fantastic. Uh, I like getting to AJ Brown as like a bring back here. I don't mind him. He's seen a ton of targets, as you can see, the past two weeks. Fantastic. But I think we get great pivot options to either Devontae Smith there at 7,400. Uh, coming off of two okay weeks, you know, 15 fans points is pretty solid. But before that, only seven. Uh, but yeah, he's been fantastic. I think it's a great pivot off of A.J. Brown, who should be decent in the pop of our, Or we can get to, you know, Dallas Goddard is a you know pretty contrarian pivot there uh, at the tight end position. But I, I do think it's going to be hard not to throw Puka in, uh, Cup in. But as of right now, I'm just going to stick to Cup. Just kind of see how the offense plays out in terms of this weekend uh, in regards to him and Puka. Moving on down here, as I mentioned, you can go to you know Smith, Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown. Uh, Jamar Chase obviously looks great there if Higgins, T. Higgins is out. If T. Higgins is out, we can look to Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd. They won't mix in Trenton Irwin and the rookie. I forget his name starts at the A a little bit, but I'd rather just stick to Jamar Chase um, and Tyler Boyd. In terms of the wide receiver situation for Detroit, Amra is doubtful. So wide receiver one would probably be Josh Reynolds, but I think him, Williams, and Khalif are all kind of the same play, all pretty cheap. If I had to give the average to one, it'd probably be Josh Reynolds just because uh, I just think he's probably the most reliable of the three. But yeah, we get some value there with that group. Uh, Moving on down here, you know, Pittman coming in, I think he's pretty solid there. Garrett Wilson just seen a ton of targets recently. Uh, He should see even more. He's going to be heavily involved in that game there. So I'd really like him in the mid-range. Moving on down here, who else stands out? Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown. Once again, the Cardinals has just been really, really solid recently. Moving down even more, as I mentioned, you know, Tyler Boyd. Rashad Bateman is back. Um, yeah, <laughs> not much to say about that. And then moving on down, I will mention uh, Wandell Robinson. Very, very cheap, you know, minimum price here. And he's been super, uh, you know, heavily targeted the first two weeks. So I think he only saw, what was it? 10% of the snaps week three, and he saw five targets. Uh, week four, I think he got closer to like 40 or 50%. I think maybe in 60%, he uh, got six targets. Obviously, the offense has been terrible, but he's been a huge, huge part of it. So I do think we really want to throw him in there into the wide receiver spot. And then for the third wide receiver spot for me right now, still some, still some uh, situations to go over, but right now I, I think I'm going to lean towards...
I do want to get a piece from that second game there in terms of Cincinnati and Arizona. I think right now we're going to go to Jamar Chase. Throw him in there. For the tight end situation, um, going to throw... I'd like to throw Kelsey in there, but we'll get to him in a second. It's really hard not to get to Kelsey and Rod Hawkinson there as a, a double stack in that game. Uh, I think that's kind of the route I'm going to go in terms of right now. I'll just throw them both in there. Actually, sorry, I'm all over the place. I'm going to go back to Brown. Not Brown, uh, sorry. Chase. We're going to throw Chase back in there. And in terms of tight end situation, uh, obviously, Love, love the double stack of Kelsey and Hawkinson in that game. I think Andrews is a fine play. Waller are going to be super, super contrarian, but, I mean, we know that he has upside. It's just can that offense get their heads together. Laporta, I think he looks very viable, especially with no Amon, Amon Ra, as he is doubtful. Uh, he's just going to be super reliant. Not crazy in terms of, like, a dot, but he will see a ton of targets underneath. Uh, I like it in two Goddard here, though, as a bring back here in the Stafford and Cooper Cup a stack here. Uh, they, Nick Sirianni did say they're going to get involved. Last time we saw that happen was week two. I uh, see week one, only one target. They said he's going to get involved. Week two, he saw seven targets, only six for 22 yards. So that the yards haven't been great, uh, but I do think they'll get him involved here. It's a nice pivot uh, off of, uh, you know, Devontae Smith or A.J. Brown uh, there. But as I mentioned, lots of like here for the Titans this week. I do finally think this is a week where the Titans, uh, a lot of them pop off. You know, Kelsey, Hawkinson, um, Laporta. I do think Waller will have a great bounce back spot here. Like Higby, a great option there to pair with Matt Stafford and Cooper Cup. Moving on down here, Pat Frymuth is out, so we can look to Darnell Washington. I, I still don't know. I do think they'll run out a few different guys, but I don't love that. Uh, you know, even if it's K Kenny Pickett, Mitch Trubisky, whoever it is, don't love that option down there. Kyle Pitts is getting very, very cheap, uh, but still hard to trust that. Conklin looks like a very solid value play there. He's been getting more involved there when it's uh, Zach Wilson throwing the ball. But as of right now, as I said, going to stick to Dallas Goddard. In terms of defense, kind of want to punt, but don't want to punt too crazy low. I uh, kind of want to stick in this mid-range here. Probably going to land on the Jets defense there against Denver and Russell Wilson. And that leaves us there with 6,400 left over. A lot of great options to get to. You could get to one of the Miami running backs if you want a piece from that game. But as of right now, let's see what we have. We have Stafford. We have Cup. We have a nice bring back with uh, Goddard there. We have Connor. Uh, Jamar Chase, we have a nice little uh, correlation bring back there as well. And we do have Rondell Robinson from that Miami game, 3,000, pretty cheap option there. Just defense going against Denver, Russell Wilson, you know, turnover prone. In terms of this next pick here, I, I really don't mind, you know, where we go. Excuse me. I think personally, probably get to, probably, I say for the sake of the video, we'll throw in one of the running backs here. We'll just go, we'll go to, we'll go to Mostert. For the sake of this video, we'll throw in Mostert there. Um, you know, this is not my official, official lineup. I will throw this lineup into a contest just to see how it does. Uh, but obviously, I'm going to make some variations off of this for my own personal, uh, you know, lineups. But I really like this lineup. I think it's a very solid lineup. So if you guys like the video, hit that like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.